Good evening and welcome everybody to the Tea Leaf Adventuring Company. My name is Luke the DM and it's my job to kill everybody. Happy Thursday. Happy to have everybody here. Uh, it has been quite some time since we've had a regularly scheduled Luke the DM TAC mission. So uh, got a lot to catch up on, a couple announcements to kind of get everybody up to speed and uh, then we'll get rocking and rolling. Um, I believe this is like the official first like start is, is this not the first official start of season four or whatever we or? actually started already but this is like the we, third episode okay 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 well because the last we're starting like a new arc. starting like a new arc so yeah, yeah yeah okay um all right so first things first just wanted to um give a big shout out to mr sharky hat for dming a couple weeks ago um which was awesome because i was down in north carolina and uh, I did go back and watch that. He did a very excellent job, and that was really cool. So if you haven't checked it out, go see that on YouTube's. Um, also, again, I want to apologize for last week because I brought back some Corona from North Carolina, so that was really fun. Uh, so my apologies. Did you bring for being it back? Sick. We have it here. I know. I just had to get that special Southern strain. I don't know. Um, so that was fun. Um, but yeah, we're back. Um, Big thank you to everybody. Again, uh, I just wanted to touch base on the uh, Kadoria Clash fundraiser that we did. Um, grand total was almost 2300 bucks, which was fucking awesome. Um, we did go back and review and make sure that the prizes and the placements that we announced during the stream were indeed correct by request. Uh, so all of that is sorted. Everyone's got their rewards all figured out. Everyone's got their tea leaf points and all that. So that was, that was super fun. Um, We've got a lot of stuff to plan and, uh, you know, get caught up on that we're all of our stretch goals and everything. Um, so we've got, you know, like a tea time coming up. We've got a couple one shots and everything. So keep an eye ear out for all that good stuff. We'll, we'll announce it as we go. Um, they are actually going to be publishing a small little article about us. Um, I've been in communication with their team. Um, so I sent them a couple pages and some pictures and all that good stuff. So um we'll keep an eye out for that and continue to kind of give them a thumbs up when we see it and share all their stuff because they were awesome and shared all of our stuff so everybody helping everybody it's a great cause um part of that um all the rewards and all the celebration is uh we've got a shitload of backstories now backlogged everybody cashing in those tea leaf points um so just to keep you guys up to speed um next thursday same time, same place. We're going to have the Sano backstory mission. Um, so I've been chit-chatting with Mr. San Ryu about the details of that. We're looking forward for that. Um, up next after that, we've got the Gordy backstory mission. So that will be hopefully sometime in December. Then we've got the Lena backstory mission. And then we've got the Scars backstory mission. So that's four of them cashed in. Uh, so we'll try to keep those to like one a month or so and just cruise through those. Um, I like to space them out a little bit just to keep our priority list moving and also make sure each individual one gets their, uh, you know, their individual love and, you know, they, they take a little bit more effort than your normal backstory or your normal attack missions. So I just want to make sure I, I, I have the energies and the times to make all those working good. Um, so yeah, next week, Thursday, we've got Sano's and I'll actually have just finished getting my tattoo. So that'll be really cool. Yeah. Um, uh, Luke, just to mention yeah. on top of that, I'm, and if you're comfortable with it, I'd like to post yeah. updates through the day. Hell yeah, as it that'd goes. be cool. Yeah, like, that'd be, be cool. Like, hey, he's still alive. And yeah. when you pass out, hey, he passed out. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here All for right. it. Um, so we've got that good stuff. Um, Monday, next Monday, which is the date of the Mondays, that's the 13th, um, we're going to have Tavern Tours, episode 3 with uh, some familiar faces here and, and continuing that awesome story. So definitely tune in for that. Mr. Wee Woo in the DM seats and me and Mr. Melvin in uh, player seats. Um, definitely fun. Uh, and just uh, one last thing I wanted to mention before we get rocking and rolling is uh, we did have some updates to the merch shop. Mr. Wee Woo uh, went and for the holiday season, got some some fancy things, some some ornaments and some pillows. We got pillows. ornaments. We got... Oh. Got a couple can koozies because with the Tavern Tour logo on one side and mm -hmm. Healy Adventuring Company on the other. Those are um, the 
picture that I posted in Discord. Uh, they have gone down in price after a reanalyzation of everything that's changed. Okay, cool. Um, we got some fridge magnets, and we have... Oh, uh, this is ridiculous. If we sell more than, like, two of those fucking pillows, I will be amazed, but... The like, emote God damn of it. God our damn very it. own Shaq and Xavius eating hero on a pillow. However, yep. to not be... So you don't have to just have that pillow if it's like, oh, I want it for a gag. The reverse side has the tack detail. Okay, okay. So there's some safety. So if you <laughs> if if like you buy it as a joke and then it's like, oh no, my parents are coming over. You just <laughs> turn it over and it doesn't look so weird that we have this weird man eating a piece of food with a very odd face on it. So I mean and if it if it doesn't sell, it doesn't sell. It it you know, so we're all about okay. it. And, we'll have to see um, it. Maybe other people's faces will appear on stuff. Maybe. <laughs> not not Jake Mills either. I won't do that. <laughs> but I'm I'm playing with stuff. I'm seeing what else we can do. Um, our suppliers got a lot more stuff coming in around like holiday stuff. Company stockings or something. We there are socks. Thigh highs. I have to play with the socks stuff. A lot of Tack stuff. Thigh highs. I could get down with that. I meant like gift biased. stockings, but oh. they also have socks. Anyway, enough about that. Like that. Get your okay. stuff going, Luke. <laughs> Are, uh, do we have any other announcements? I feel like that was pretty comprehensive. I think that's that's pretty much everything um, we've got. Tabin Tour scheduling is changing a stage. I'm no longer available to on Mondays. So we got to play with that and figure out where that will. Okay. We'll let you guys know when we do know. Figure that out. Uh, well, we we oh, have a, an eventual Disney one shot coming because of the gift thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Jake. Yeah, we got so much coming now. There's Ooh, a lot the... coming down the pipeline. A oh, lot much. of it's probably going to be early 2024. So, well, we'll keep you guys updated. If you're not in our Discord channel, where we have all of our announcements and memes and discussions and all that stuff, definitely get in there. Um, we're getting a lot of new folks in there, which is really cool to see. A lot of new hype, so um, definitely come hang out, say hi, keep up to date. That's that's where the magic happens. <laughs> Alrighty, enough blabbering. Who wants to play some fucking D&D? &D? Okay. No, I thought this was Ben. No, this is Patrick. Alright. <clears throat> ben, a while. I'm rusty. I haven't done the intro in, in a minute. Okay, here we go. Our story tonight begins, as they always do, in the beautiful free city of Kadoria, on a lonely peninsula to the north of the Midnight Sea. There, on the prime central thoroughway drag, known as Evander's Alley, right where it turns right into the south onto Melora's Way, in that central town square, known as Avis Piazza, sits a beautiful three-story mansion, which now serves as the city's adventuring company, Guild Hall. And things in Kadoria have been much happier in recent weeks after um, the mightiest of heroes of the company have banded together to take down Galdoran and the Daiban Order and return Kadoria back to the normal day-night cycle. There was month-long parades and festivals and parties and celebration, and uh, the sun is nice back high up in the sky just in time for winter to make the days nice and short and cold. Um, but there's that sort of crisp autumn breeze in the air. Uh, there's that sort of lingering anticipation of, uh, of winter coming and, and starting the preparations for that sort of thing. And the biggest buzz on the streets of Kadoria, which a few people in tonight's mission have, uh, have dabbled in, uh, is the appearance of a rather strange and foreboding ivory tower just sticking out of the ocean in the Midnight Sea, about a third of a mile off the coast to the south of Cupander's Key. Um, many have tried to swim or sail out to the tower and investigate. There's been various rumors and stories and theories about this tower. But our mission tonight begins... With the five of you in the Tealeaf Adventure and Company Guild Lounge, um, early morning, we'll say, uh, just around breakfast time, 
um, going about your daily business, uh, and you see Miss Marigold Tealeaf, the matron of the Tealeaf Adventuring Company, um, dressed in full regalia. She's got her ceremonial kimono, her headpiece, the, uh, the dragon fang earrings, the astral peacock feather braided into her hair, her van braces, necklaces, rings, looking very, very formal and almost battle ready. You've seen her, uh, this sort of suited up on several occasions, but usually this, this calls for some sort of occasion. Hey, Hefe. Why to get up? Uh, hello, have we met? Oh, no, sorry. And Bobbert is going to wipe all four of his arms real quick and shake the trash off them. Uh, my name is Bobbert. I came in with that Billium guy a couple weeks back. Oh, oh, you're one of, you're one of, oh, gotcha, I see. Um, welcome, welcome, um... I, I assume you've made yourself at home, and you're all acquainted, and, and... Yep, good, got everything good. I need right here. And he slaps the trash can next to him. Yeah, good, good. Happy, happy you're, you're, you're comfortable. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I was just, um... I figured enough time has passed, and curiosity's gotten the better of me. Um, I was actually gonna go and in investigate that tower for myself um i want to see what it's about yeah just kind of want the one out there yeah the the one that just appeared um a few weeks ago oh and the water so you're like a real good swimmer uh no i was, I was gonna get a boat actually um oh. and i was actually looking for maybe a handful of of guild members to to join me as sort of like a an emissary or liaison representatives of the company. Um, just, I'm not expecting anything formidable, but you never know. Um, I, I, I quite frankly have no idea what to expect. Um, but I figure we'll go and just, um, you know, we come in peace sort of thing and whatever happens, happens. Guild's gonna go up in that moment right when she said guild members and be like, did you say guild? Hi, Geld. Yeah, um, do you want to come on a, a boat ride with me and I Bobbert here? Of a boat ride. Let's go. Or awesome. Else, awesome. Lagging. <laughs> Great. Excellent. Um, I was just going to kind of see. Uh, uh, the guild has a funny bit of magic that makes people show up at the most convenient of times. Walking out from behind the long cat scratch. It's autumn as she stands to her full height of five foot nothing. Thing on the dalliance to the tower. Yeah, I I figured enough times passed, um, and things are relatively under control here now. Um, I, uh, I, oh. I, I you're okay. As long as we are not swimming. Oh, no, great! No, she got awesome. a boat, man. We're good. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna grab a, a small rowboat just to, to go. Um, I was gonna ask Selena for the the she wolf, but I feel like that's a bit grandiose for you know what a relatively simple reading. Um, I wouldn't want to be too threatening or imposing or anything. We're just gonna go check things out. No, but... Oh, I mean, if it if it comes to that, I'm uh, uh prepared. Um, I I promise. I mean, we're we're so close to the shore. We're so close to Kadoria. Um, worst case scenario, we can simply just teleport out, and we'll be okay. Um, okay. Uh, so that's one, two, three. Maybe a couple more? There doesn't seem I... to be anybody else here. 
it's it's oddly quiet in, in, in it's such a peaceful time of morning. I know some people, you know, there's that disheveled the, 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 lump the, of the, flesh over laying on that couch with a baseball bat next. <laughs> I am currently snuggling with my omelet. The, yes. What's what's ha what's going on? We were gonna go um, take a quick little boat ride to investigate that ivory tower. Um, if you were looking for a bit of excitement, I, I didn't want to interrupt your um, whatever whatever that is you're doing. It's a very intimate experience. I can understand that. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I haven't been out for like a hot minute. Uh, we we got we got room for one more. Yeah, yeah, I was actually looking for for another pair or a couple. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, you want to go for a ride? Do you remember the last time that you were on a boat and how badly that went? No, no, I do not. <laughs> I suppose you can't go by yourself. All right, let's, let's they were roommates. Go. <laughs> <laughs> they were roommates. <laughs> Awesome. Um, yeah, if you guys want to, um, just, you know, we'll, we'll rendezvous back at the front door in maybe 10, 15 minutes or so. Sound good for everyone? Awesome. Sounds good by me, man. All right. So this is the dungeon master telling all of you guys that this is your last chance to stock up on supplies, ask any questions, buy any potions, all of that good stuff. So speak now or forever hold your peace. You guys know the drill. Um, 50 gold per standard? Yep. We have a command for that now. Oh my god. We do? Potions. Look at that. Oh my god. Oh, How shit. convenient is that? I can't wait for everyone to keep asking you just so you can talk about this command more often. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am going to do the Artificer plus one longbow thingy, Vajigger. Okay. Yeah, I'm alright. I've got my pen. <laughs> Alrighty. So, as you guys strap up and get your armor, equipment, potions, and equipment ready to go, you rendezvous back with Marigold at the front door of the Teal Adventuring Company, which oddly hasn't seen too much traffic in the last year or so, so it's there's an odd sort of refreshing sort of sensation as you walk out into uh, Ava's Piazza. As the door creaks the city. Sorry. <laughs> the, uh, the city seems to be um, almost in sort of a hungover state, we'll call it. Um, business getting back to normal. There's a bit of a delay with supply lines and sort of, you know, after months, you know, a month-long party... Um, and a year of, of artificial night, uh, things are still sort of getting adjusted and also getting prepared for the oncoming winter. Um, but there's, there's definitely a livelihood here that's been missing. And so, um, as you turn right out of the doorway and head south along Moora's way to, uh, Kupander's Key, um, you can see, um, as you're sort of walking down the, the main street here, um, Kind of as the city drops lower towards the coastline, you can kind of see the key built up around. You can see ships coming in and out of ports. But off on the horizon, uh, standing out like a sore thumb, is that strange marble white tower just protruding out of the ocean. Uh, and it's large enough to be to be quite visible from from this distance. Um, and you can see sort of on that low rise, um, sort of about where the gates are that separate the slums from the quay, um, there's a, a still a, a sizable crowd of townspeople all sort of observing the tower and whispering. And um, they sort of part ways as, as the six of you are making your way down the street. You can kind of hear whispers and excited cheers and people asking for autographs and things like that. Uh, being associated with the Teal Adventuring Company comes with a little bit of fame and notoriety. Um, but uh, you, you get the sense that this tower is still sort of the 
most exciting thing that's happening locally in the last couple weeks or so. So does this thing like kind of like happen often here? It seems like we've got, you know, I haven't been here for too long, don't get me wrong, but we, we had like a perpetual night time and now we've got a weird phallic shaped object protruding from the ocean. Yeah, and, but uh, where did that did it come from the sky or from like the underground? Um, I mean, supposedly it like reaches all the way down, but I, I don't, I do not know the origin of the phallus. Oh, this is not good. That could be intersecting one of the Queen's sanctioned highways. <laughs> we need to investigate this tower for sure. All right. Um, yeah, we'll just go and, um, you know, I've heard my own fair share of information about it. So I've got my presumptions, but we'll just be calm and cordial and represent the city and figure things out. We'll get to the bottom of it or the top of it or we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Whatever it takes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, she like looks over and you can see um, sort of tied to a large fishing vessel. There's like a smaller, uh, almost like a lifeboat of sorts. And she just kind of like gestures to it. And a few dock workers actually unhitch uh, and uh, carry it out for her um all the way down to the the wharf itself and sort of gently plop it into the water um about three rows of seats a couple oars there it's it's pretty rudimentary pretty simple but marigold thanks them very very cordially and um they return back to their work as all of you guys make your way down to the water with uh, a small mob kind of following you in excitement asking a bunch of questions and kind of like creating a little bit of a buzz um and you see this like throng of people kind of like growing and expanding as you, as you get closer. People kind of joining with the a little bit of excitement. And Marigold just kind of all smiles and, and polite little waves. Um, not engaging super, super much with uh, any of the questions. But just kind of going about the business. And she seems very like focused and determined. and But um, happy to just kind of be out and doing something. Crap. Bobber is, while walking alongside the crowd, shaking hands with two of his limbs on his right side. <laughs> and just kind of like giving like little curt nods, like, yes, I see you. Yes, yes, good, good, good. We are good. <laughs> yes. Yeah, very excited by the crowd and actually passes someone. Like, hi, I'm Gil. Hi, I'm Gil. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Gil. <laughs> so. As you guys uh, make your way to the water and have your boat prepared, Marigold kind of climbs in and takes a seat uh, and kind of looks and gestures for the five of you to join her. Autumn slinks in and like claws dig into the wood. <laughs> Gil, you hear... I'm sorry to the boat, gives Autumn a pat on the back and says, don't worry, we're not going to let you drown. You hear a very Thank like you. light ink as uh, Bobbert in his tin can just like drops with no grace right into the boat, <laughs> and then another clank as he sits down. Lils, I remember the last time I was on a boat, I I, I sank it, didn't I? Yes, yes, and the time before that, and time before that hmm, that uh, seems to be a pattern I will uh, attempt to not do that this time uh, third time's the charm lady if if the boat does capsize which it shouldn't I have no reason to expect um, I can do a little bit of magic and we'll just walk back to the shore no big deal we might get a little wet but we'll, we won't have to swim it'll be okay All right. Um, any any volunteers to row? Uh, Geld, you look rather strong and strapping. Geld is more than happy to row the boat. Awesome. And um, you know, Bobber, would you like to take the other side? This will be in service for my queen. I will do it. Excellent. That we appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so let me just rearrange things here. Awesome. <laughs> 
Um, ladies, I assume you'll sit next to each other. So that leaves um, Autumn. Do you want to sit up front with me? I can use your um, your keen eyes to keep a close lookout as we approach the tower. Awesome. So, as you guys shove off and begin to row, um, you head straight towards this large ivory tower. Um, as you approach, you're rowing for hmm, ten minutes or so. Um, the tower itself is like pristine snowfall there are no blemishes or cracks or seams or anything that would show any sign of imperfection the walls are smooth and round um extending high up into the clouds and as far low as you can see um you'd gather maybe about 150 feet or so in diameter perfectly circular um but just very out of place and very strange. There are no doors or windows or arrow holes that you can see. Uh, it's just very, very bizarre. Um, but as you continue to row and get closer and closer and closer, I would need the first roll of the night, everybody to make me a perception check. Well, I'm glad I'm living up to the hype. Mm -hmm. Hi. Alrighty. Uh, so my two animal companions... Uh, Autumn hey, we take offense and... to that term. <laughs> my two furries, no. <laughs> um, uh, you guys would notice this 311 that's hysterical um you two would happen to notice this first um as you're watching the tower and approaching um sort of in the middle of the the morning mist and sort of amongst some of like the the white spray as some of the white caps of the ocean begin to get a little you know higher out here as you get further out to sea you see these mesmerizing and captivating spears appear on the surface of the tower, sort of gently floating and undulating and rotating and swirling. Um, all different colors and different sizes, um, but seemingly just sort of shifting and almost bumping into each other and bouncing off of each other around the surface of the tower. And Geld, you notice as you're rowing, um, the water in the ocean alongside the ship actually seems to have almost a similar spheres, like little little circles, almost as if, like, imagine, like, a spotlight being shown onto the water. Um, all different colors and sizes, um, just sort of, like, orbiting around and bumping off of each other in, you know, the near vicinity here. Now, being kind of, like, only... A couple of feet above the surface of the water it's a little bit difficult to see uh the ex exact size and extent of some of these circles but you can see the ones as they get close to the ship kind of like looking over the side of the boat um you can definitely see tints of blues and greens and reds and silvers kind of just like passing around the boat and uh as presumably you you point this out to the rest of the party um, you would all observe the same strange phenomenon, both on the actual face of the tower and in the water around you. Marigold kind of looks over the boat. This is really peculiar. Um, and she's kind of, you, you see her kind of like taking a minute and like following one particular circle and there's kind of like looking around. It's almost like she's trying to deduce something out of this. Um. 
Butter. Gail, would you guys? This mine. Yeah, the ore. Butter is a foot tall. Right here I forgot him. to mention that earlier. <laughs> he's very, he's very small, small yeah. so he's been like doing little. Connection. theory here is these orbs are representative of the great wheel cosmology um let me try something i i don't quite see it just yet but let me and you see her as she sort of begins to trace her fingertips there's little bits of like golden and green druidic magic that begin to kind of permeate from her hand and almost create an aura around you. And you see, almost, she seems to almost be like plucking and dragging these circles on the tower, although you guys are still, you know, a couple hundred feet out. Um, she seems to be like rearranging and moving them. And as she does so, uh, you guys observe that these spheres in the water actually seem to be moving and orienting themselves accordingly as she's dragging the spheres on the surface of the tower it's very like almost like a puppeteer kind of just so very delicately moving and uh, inspecting and placing in, in certain locations and i'm going to go ahead and move you guys to the map as we get to sort of the end result of this So, you guys uh, should be able to see. Let me know if you can't. I, I am in internal darkness. I can I, see absolutely I nothing. I can only... My bad. My bad. My bad. I forgot to turn vision on. My bad. Um, oh, orbs. There we go. Um, hate when I do that. Okay, you're all set. You're all set. And Autumn is But awesome. it might be because everybody else. Okay. Everybody good now? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So, um, as Marigold kind of like standing up on her sort of diminutive stature, kind of like dragging and, and placing, um, you guys have kind of like drifted with the current, um, fairly close to the tower. Uh, but you can see as she kind of finishes, the, the spheres appear to form 16 different blotches of, of multicolored water in a circle around the boat with the boat in the approximate center and now the circle itself is by no means perfect as a lot of these orbs are slightly misshapen and shifting and moving but marigold kind of does her best to get them in an approximate sort of order here okay and here guessing um i think and as she turns to look at you geld you notice marigold's actually got like a slight nosebleed oh my god marigold, are you all right uh, oh miss kind of and bleeding there. yeah take uh, this and bobbert hands her a napkin thank you i'm just focusing and and she actually like passes out and um actually like ends up kind of like slumped over the, the front of the ship and you uh, see i catch her um i'm gonna catch her and pull uh, her back in okay uh you see as she does so a few drops of blood actually drip into the water and she's out cold hey uh she's breathing autumn uh, go ahead and make a medicine check. Oh, fuck no. Oh, she's dead! <laughs> Throw her overboard! <laughs> well, oh, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. What happened? No, she's... Uh, no, I'm not I actually to... doing that. Oh, I thought you threw her back to Bobbert for a second. My bad. No, I said throw her overboard. Because oh. I think she's dead. But not really. No. <laughs> um, 
Better go. I don't know what's going on with this. Uh, the, the, the waters. Mm -hmm. uh, here, uh, Ilya. Amidst all of this panic, you guys see nearby, attracted by the blood, there are a number of sea creatures that uh, apparently are quite attracted to blood. They're going to rise up to the surface around you. They're hungry, they're here, and I need everybody to go ahead and click on your token and join the initiative. Oop, I have to clear the initiative. Sorry, this was not cleared for me. Uh, I so thought it was. Autumn, Autumn will take your 23, and go ahead, and everybody else can go ahead and uh, add theirs. Hey, pretty good. I'm going to get my sharks here in the initiative. Okay. Everybody in? Looks like it. Yep. So as these uh, six sharks kind of rise up, you see the fins followed by like these large maws kind of rising up out of the water, attracted by the blood. Um, in this moments of rising panic, Lena and Autumn, you have the initiative. Would you mind? Go ahead. I, I can shoot him. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to shoot uh, this one right here, Mr. Luke. Okay. By the brown circle. Perfect. Sharpshooter, so whatever I roll will be minus five. Minus five, okay. Sixteen. A 16 is a hit. 10 damage. 19. 19. Very nice. Good shot. Or so that is that is the extent of it. Alrighty. Okay. Yeah, okay, I guess uh I guess I can do that too. And uh the same one. Okay. Twenty two for twelve. Very nice shot. That's another hit. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I just want to put it out there that it is not my fault if we capsize. <laughs> no, that's dude. All righty. Uh, Bobber, you're up. My cat is making biscuits on my chest as we play. It's very cute. Nice. I don't know if you can see the little paws. Uh, I just saw the one come up and, like, <laughs> do a little pull. Um, Bobber is going to brandish what looks like a toothpick, but I swear it's a javelin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, and just call it from hell's heart, I stab at thee. And throw it towards the shark. Uh, which uh, one? The one that has been being targeted. I looked away for a moment. Okay, sure. That's also uh, probably a disadvantage. That will be a disadvantage, yeah. It's kind of a long shot. A 10 is going to go a little bit wide and splash into the water. I have four more of those. Come closer. <laughs> uh, Bobbert's turn. Alrighty. The sharks are going to all close in. Now, something interesting happens, and it happens all simultaneously as you're tracking these sharks. As they make their way through, uh, you notice this shark here passes through this blue orb, and as it emerges on the other side, you can see it almost encased in this sort of icy armor as it comes up. Um, it's going to get right up there next to Autumn, and it's going to make a bite attack. Uh, it's a 22. Alright, Autumn, you're going to take 6 points of piercing damage, plus 4 points of cold damage. Total. And 10 total, and until the start of the shark's next turn, you cannot regain hit points. Well, that's just... Fucking rude. Mm -hmm. You see this shark over here uh, is going to swim through this sort of like pale green orb. And as it emerges on the other side, you can see flowers, almost like garlands, like wrapping around this. Um, and as it swims and, and sort of like gains speed towards the ship... Um, leaving 
trails of beautiful, like, glistening petals in its wake. Uh, it's going to swim up and take a bite against you, Bobber. Oh, no. Uh, that's a 19 to hit. Oh, that actually hits. All right, that's going to be 10 points of piercing damage, uh-huh. plus 4 points of radiant damage. And as it bites... Do... What's up? Do I have resistance to radiant as a paladin, or no? Mm-mm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so 14 damage total, mm-hmm. and as it bites, this giant shark kind of like taking a chunk out of you, you can see there's sort of like a glistening, lingering magical effect that almost swarms you. Uh, make me a quick arcana check. Okay. Uh, the shark almost definitely actually just ate one of Bobbert's non-small mm-hmm. limbs. Uh, that was a big, big hit. Uh, DC was five. This is a relatively well-known first-level spell. Um, you are under the effects of the fairy fire spell. Oh no! <laughs> oh, this is not good. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, this one up here is going to swim through this sort of sky blue one, um, and as it comes out you can see uh it's almost surrounded by this mist or these like clouds that seem to be wrapping around it Uh, it's gonna swim up and take a bite out at you geld Uh, i'm just trying to mark all these if i remember uh so against geld that's gonna be a 22 to hit oh shit okay yeah yeah uh, that's going to be 13 points of piercing plus 4 points of lightning damage. Okay. Uh, uh, how, how much was that again? Uh, 17 total. Alrighty. Uh, and I need you to make me a strength saving throw. Uh, Alright. You manage to keep your footing but you feel some sort of strange sense trying to like knock you prone uh but you manage to, to keep your foot in already uh let's see um this one's gonna swim through the purple one it's gonna emerge and go for lena as this one emerges you just see it's sprouting tentacles and it's got like 16 eyes and it's on fire and yet it's like color is going negative and it turns into an x-ray for a minute it seems to just be like this undulating blob of random as it comes up uh and it's gonna bite out at elena uh it's a 23 to hit on lena oh yeah that's going to be nine points of piercing plus four points of acid damage. Uh, and I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. Okay, I am resistant to acid. All right. You feel as it bites you this like strange sense of bewilderment kind of cloud your brain for a minute, and then you're fine. Uh, this one's going to swim right through this, like, deep maroon one. Um, it's gonna swim up actually towards Marigold. Uh, and as it appears, you can see, um, takes on a much more ferocious, almost demonic presence. You can see, uh, the musculature in the shark expanding the teeth, getting this, like, wicked, razor-sharp, almost bloodthirsty look to it. The eye is going this deep red... Almost this fiendish appearance. Uh, it's going to bite out at advantage against Marigold. Uh, it has a 20 to hit, which actually misses Marigold. So that'll be that. Um, and then the last one's going to swim through this brown one uh, going towards Autumn. And as it appears, you can see um, takes on kind of a similar appearance to the one that went after Marigold, except this one seems a little bit more dignified, a little bit more noble. Fiendish, but almost devilish, you would say. Uh, and it's going to take a jump out. Uh, that's a 12 against Autumn. That's a miss, thankfully. Alrighty, that is all of their turns. That's going to bring us to Lilia.
think I was or, muted. There you go. Um, is it Bobert or Bobert? Bobert? Uh, it's Bobert. Bobert. Okay, sorry. I'm going to attack that one. With Poison Spirit. That is not the right button. Is it? No, he has to make a con saving throw. Uh, which one is it, sorry? Poison Spirit on the one by Bobert. Okay, it's going to make a con save. Uh, that's a failure, so he is going to take 8 points of poison damage. Very nice. Um, bonus action, Shalili. Okay. Very cool, very cool. And that's it. Alrighty, that'll bring us to Geld. Um, so Geld is going to go ahead and go into rage. Okay. Right pissed. Um, and with She's going to try and jab this guy here, if it's okay, um, with the leeching harpoon. Uh, all right, um, go for it. And with the leeching harpoon, oh shit, doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> That's a natty one, unfortunately. Oof. Um. Yep, that's gonna be it for Gal. <laughs> Alrighty, a swing and a miss. Um, but raging now, so that's good. That's gonna bring us to the top of round two. That'll bring us to Autumn and Lena once again. Please, Lena, after you. Um. Oh, okay. All right. Um. I. They, am... they are. They are engaged. They're in melee. Just making that. Yep. Um. So I'm going to go after uh, Mr. Poopy Whoopy, the brown one there. This guy down here? <laughs> yeah. Okay. The damage stack uh, one. Yeah. Uh, since I've got reach with cold snap, since it's a whip, I'm going to lash out at him. Okay. Uh, 15 will hit. Okay. I am not using the con save. Okay. But it will still take the cold damage if it's not. Okay, so that's nine points of slashing, plus three for a total of twelve. That's actually a kill on this one. Just barely, but you got it. All right, fuck yeah. And then um, I'm going to turn, and I don't know. I'm not fucking into the tentacles, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna punch out at uh, Mr. Tentacles. Okay. And miss. Nine to miss. And that's what I got. All right, and Autumn. All right, I'm gonna gonna attack at ten. Ten is a miss. Uh, bonus action, offhand. Shut up, Alexa. <laughs> Twenty-three. I'll get in. Nice. Every little as, bit helps. As it, you strike out, you feel this icy shard. Actually, sorry, never mind, because you got affected by the other spell. Never mind. Okay, you're good. I well, was thinking you, armor of Agathus, because you, you wrote icy armor. I was thinking armor of Agathus, but it's a different spell that hit you. Oh, okay, you, you described it as it came out as mm -hmm. fire type. Makes sense. Gotcha. No, you were right to do so. Okay. Uh, anything else? Ah, oh, that's it. Alrighty, that'll bring us to Bobber. Uh, Bobber is going to pull out his flail and go, "Hey, Shark Sopa, we're gonna get, we're gonna eat tonight." Mm -hmm. Uh, and is going to whack. You know what? As bonus action, he's first going to cast Divine Favor. There you go. Okay. Uh, dealing an extra D4 radiant damage on hits, Hell or yeah. as long as I am concentrating. Very cool. Very cool. And now I will hit you with my flail. 17's gonna connect. So you're going for the green one there? The flowery one? Uh, yeah, flower boy. Okay. Um, and then the extra D4. Sorry, I don't have that. It's all good. Set up at the moment. Alright, so 12 damage on that one. Very nice. Cool, cool, cool. And that's the turn. Alrighty, that's going to bring us to the sharks' turns now. So the sharks are going to kind of do this interesting thing where they rotate. So this one's going to go here. This one's going to move up here. 
Uh, this one's gonna swoop around over to here. This one's gonna swoop down here. This one's gonna swoop here. Um, so each of you can take an opportunity attack if you would like. I would like to. I take it, take it on the one that's kind of like exiting your space. Mm-hmm. Okay. Lena with the big crit. Um, so as part of, uh, Ava's cloak, mm -hmm. the crit does max damage. Oh, shit. Okay, so that's gonna be, um... So... Can you give me a max damage roll on that? Yeah, uh, that would be a d4. I don't know. Okay, so that's an extra one there. Plus an extra eight. Okay, so that is eight cold plus 13 slashing. So 21 total. Very nice. Okay. Uh, Lilia, your 11 is going to be a miss. Bobbert's 14 will hit. You can get, give me the extra d4 on that. So seven points on Greeny here. Uh, and then the 12 is actually going to hit uh, for Autumn. You found the AC. Um, Fiend, it doesn't get that poison. He, that one is not. So that'll be 13 think so. on that one. I okay. lied, Luke. It's not. It wasn't at advantage. It's only at, for attacks at advantage. Oh, okay. So, so it's just... Uh... 15? 12 plus 15. Okay, so I'll give him 6 health back. Cool. Thank you. Alright. As they swim and rotate, they're going to make their own round of attacks. So the red one here is going to attack Autumn. Okay. Uh, that's a miss with an 8. Okay. The blue icy one is going to attack Bobbert uh, at advantage because you're affected by fairy fire. Uh, that's going to be a crit on Bobbert. Uh, that's going to be 17 points of piercing damage on you, Bobbert, plus 6 of uh, necrotic damage. And you're muted still. Sorry. Sorry, I started having a side conversation. No, that's okay. Uh, so this blue one here crit you. Oh, shit. Yeah, so you're going to take uh, 17 points of piercing damage, plus 4 of necrotic. And you cannot regain hit points until the start of the shark's next turn. That doesn't matter. Are you down? I'm dead. Not dead, but down. I'm dead. No. I'm dead. That put What's me past the... What's that your put me maximum? Past 10 point 18. 18? So you would have to take 36 damage from a single attack to be dead dead. Oh, it's not yes. when you meet... Oh, shit. No, okay, it's never not mind. when you meet, no. So you're just down. You're thinking 3.5 so that you dead. played last night. I... <laughs> <laughs> doing me dirty <laughs> so that one that one knocks you uh this green one flowery one is going to attack geld uh geld that's a seven to hit that's a miss uh the blue one here that's the cloudy one is going to attack lena lena that's a 21 to hit mm -hmm. that's going to be 12 points of piercing plus four of thunder damage and need a strength saving throw all right, you keep your footing. And Mr. Random Uwu is going to attack Marigold and miss. All righty, that's going to bring us to Lilia. I need to learn to take myself off mute. I'm going to do Poison Spray again on the one that just attacked... The red one here? Um, sorry, the blue one, just, well, I, okay. yeah, I think the blue one, because... Okay. He's going to make a con save and fail, so he's going to take eight poison damage, very nice. Alrighty. Yeah, that's it. Okie dokie, that's going to bring us to Geld. Um, Geld is going to... Her King Crab Claymore 
and Ooh. try to go for the green one here. Okay. So she's going to use her fire sword for the first time. <laughs> Hell yeah. A 15 is going to connect. So it looks like the damage isn't quite set up for that correctly. So that's going to be 2d6 plus 4. Uh, sorry. Um, 2d6 plus 5. Uh, yes, that was one. Yes, yeah, so go ahead and roll me two d. There we go. So 16 points of slashing damage on this guy. Nice shot. That's actually a kill on this one. Nice. Hell yeah. That is... Yeah, that's going to be it for kill. Okay, uh, you still have a bonus action if you want to do your frenzy attack? Sure, why not? Um... A frenzy attack on the, uh, this blue one. Only. Yeah, I would say you could, you're close enough to kind of shift and like reach over Bobbert. You could get an attack there. Bobbert also doesn't right. take up that um, much space. Mm -hmm. All right. She's gonna go ahead and um, do that repeat. Then I, I guess with the um, crab claymore, if she's lucky enough. Hell yeah. Ooh, the eleven is yeah. gonna actually. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be a miss, unfortunately, with the 11. I was just making sure that was set up. Alrighty, that's going to bring us top of round three is Lena and Autumn. After you, Lena. Okay. Alright. I am going to stow Cold Snap and take out my bat. Okay. And uh, give the one in front of me a nice old swing. Okay. 14 will hit for 8 points of bludgeoning. Alright, and then we're gonna fucking kick it in the snaz. Ooh, that's a <laughs> crit. That's a kick. <laughs> Hell yeah. The noses are very sensitive. You should aim for that area. <laughs> Uh, that's what I got. Alrighty, hell yeah, that'll bring us to Autumn. Autumn's gonna attack the red dotted one. Okay. 21 on minute. 8 points of slashing and 7 points of poison if it is a fiend. Which, interestingly enough, it seems to be affected by the poison. Yes, speak. Oh. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do something stupid because this sword is taking over my life as Autumn. I'm gonna try and mount this shark. I want it dead. Okay, go ahead and make an animal handling check. Oh, um. Yeah. 19! Not bad. As you slash it, it's kind of like momentarily dazed as it kind of like submerges just slightly. You take that opportunity, something in you compels you to jump out of the boat, grab onto the giant's fin, and kind of like saddle up. So you kind of like got the thing straddled. Yep. You're seated with one leg on either side and sort of like holding on with your left hand onto the, the fin there. You are, you're, you've mounted the shark. <laughs> this one's mine. And I am going to second win, second win boat. Okay. It, that's all I got. Alrighty. Uh, Bobbert's ahead of the game here, so we got that 13 death saves. So that's one success. I clicked a little early, my bad. I meant to say Bobbert puts a hand up, and as he rolls, he either puts a thumb up or a thumb down. So one <laughs> thumb up. Alrighty. Like to see it. Like to see it. Okay. Uh, so that's going to bring us to the sharks. Um, this shark is going to take this opportunity to swim away, and it's going to pass through the yellow here. Um, you see the, um, 
the icy armor fade and as it emerges on the other side it's actually got these like beautiful angelic wings that are sprouting off the back of it so i'm going to give it a little wing icon here um and it's going to kind of like wrap back around uh this one's going to take autumn and go on a joy ride uh so it's going <laughs> to provoke an opportunity from lilia Uh, eight is gonna miss with Shulele, uh, but it's gonna pass through this this sort of like gray steel looking color. As it does so, uh -huh. the sort of um, fiendish, almost uh, demonic looking energy fades. And as it emerges from the other side, you can see it almost looks almost steampunk, robotic, mechanical, uh, clockwork almost. Um, it's not really like a gear or anything, so we'll give it that one. Uh, what does it do to me? Interesting. Also go through the portal. <laughs> you do. It actually has no effect on you, interestingly enough. Oh, good. <laughs> um, but it's going to kind of emerge over here, and it's actually going to attempt to shake you off. Uh, so I need you to make me an athletics check. Going for a oh, swim. Alrighty. Yeah, it tosses you off into the water next to it. So you can go ahead and move yourself adjacent to it. Cool. Um, this one is going to... Let's see. This one's going to continue to bite. It's it's got a pretty good buff, so it's gonna bite out at Geld. Uh, Geld, that's a seventeen to hit. Uh, I'm at seventeen. Okay, so meat, so it's gonna uh, it's gonna hit. So that's gonna be eight points of piercing, halved to four, plus right. four of thunder damage. So total of eight, and then I need the strength saving throw. At advantage. All right, and you keep your footing. So eight points of damage there. Um, and then Uwu, so random over here, uh, is going to swim away. It's going to pass through this black circle. Uh, as it does so, you see it just turn completely this, like, almost inky, black, very ominous-looking, shadowy kind of vibe over here. Uh, that'll be their full turn, so it's going to bring us to Lilia. I'm going to heal this ant creature. Okay. <laughs> Next. Alrighty, so 11 health back to Bobber. Very nice, very nice. Um... If I were to do a medicine check on Marigold, would that be a full action? Uh, yeah, I would say that'd be a full action. Okay. Um, now that Autumn's moved, I guess I'll just have to wait, uh, for now. Okay. That's it. That'll bring us to Geld. Geld is, since we have this one right next to us, she's gonna try and do that same thing with the grab claymore trying to just like poke it in the gills Alrighty, 15 is gonna hit and we've got the 2d6 there we go uh plus the rage for 12 points of damage nice shot so she had um the, uh, the, the frenzy mm -hmm. yeah yeah because when you um, rage um you can choose to like enter the frenzy rage pretty much and that gives it the bonus action attack so um if she uses that she'll be able to frenzy later on uh you'll just get more exhausted yeah so it's up to you i'm gonna have her end it right there okay cool all righty that'll bring us to lena 
All right. Um, we're gonna we're gonna keep going with the bat. All right. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Nineteen hits for eight. All right. Um, bonus action. We are gonna second wind. Okay. Pretty decent. And um, fuck it. We're gonna action surge. Hell yeah. Mance. Okay, alright. And we're gonna fucking do it again. Bam! Boom, and that's actually your kill right there. Hell yeah. Alright, alright. What the, what the fuck did the kitty go? <laughs> <laughs> alright, that's what I got. Um, sorry, Luke. I keep having the babysit the <laughs> printer, but I hear one right here. Um, okay. Uh, so you're I in also, the drink right now next to this Yep, shark, and I also shark. completely forgot I have action, sir. Nice. Just just throwing that out there. Like, shit, I have that ability. Um, I stuff. I don't feel the same urge I wanted to kill this thing with, so... But I'm still gonna kill it, because it's next to me. I know what I'm fighting. Alright, so a disadvantage of 15 will hit. Great, yeah. Six Six points. Nice. Action surge, doing it again. Okay. Twenty. Twenty hits. Ten slash. Another ten. Hell yeah. Pull up. All right. He's still up. Yeah. Bonus action. Offhand. Eighteen. Eighteen hits. Good rolls. Three. Another three. Okay. Um. Going to take the attack of opportunity. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it should hit double my movement. Okay. Get away from it. All right. The attack of opportunity is going to be a twenty-two. That'll hit for eleven points of piercing, plus. Four points of force damage, so 15 total. <laughs> All right. And I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. I mean, That's a failure. Uh, it's going to command you to halt. So as you swim away... As the spell takes effect, you have to halt. Why well, don't swim, boy? You're right. You would swim. It acts like a sentinel. Yeah. Cracks. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. All right. Alrighty, Bobbert, you're up. Oh, I mean, it hurts. I, oh, I bit one of my arms off. That's no good. Oh, the cat can fight though. It's just really going at the uh, really going at that shark. Who's hurt? Who else? Oh my god, Marigold. <laughs> uh, and Bobber is going to rush over to Marigold mm -hmm. and expend five hit points. Uh, uh, spend three hit points of land hands. Okay, as you do so, her color kind of starts to come back, and she kind of inhales a little bit and you see her eyes kind of flutter and she seems a little bit dazed but she kind of blinks and is coming back to consciousness and she kind of looks around a little confused welcome back Hefe. you missed the sharks but they're mostly gone now the cat lady's on one if you want to check it out where is everyone okay uh the cat's on a shark so that's i mean She's she's handling her own. She's attacked them a whole bunch. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm gonna have Marigold join the initiative. <laughs> She's part of the fight now. Letting this load up. It's chugging. Marigold, she is very very complicated. Okay. Um. Initiative for Marigold's a 19. Nice. Okay. Uh, uh, anything else for Bobber? Uh, 
bonus action, Bobbert's going to drink one of his potions. Okay. Then it's the 2d4 plus 2. So, oh damn. Alright. Bobbert's feeling good again. Nice. Very nice. His arm hasn't grown back yet, but he's feeling good. <laughs> All righty. Uh, on Marigold's turn, she's going to kind of stand up. Uh, thank you. Um, oh, geez, these little buggers. Uh, she's going to stand up and just kind of like point at this inky black shark down here. Um, she's just going to throw a blight at it because fuck that thing. Um, it's going to make a constitution saving throw. Fails, and yeah, this thing just kind of disintegrates into the water. Um Sorry, I, I don't like hurting animals, but uh, that didn't look natural. Oh, uh, they went they went through all these circles and everything. One of them came out a robot. What? Yeah, look <laughs> over there, and Bobbert's going to point over towards where the cat is. Uh, all right. Speaking of robot sharks, the robot shark's going to turn to Autumn and make a bite at you. No, that's fair. Uh, That's going to be a 12 to hit. Yes. Alrighty, that's his full action. Uh, the only other surviving one um, is going to swim through this pink one here. Um, and it's going to lose its angel wings. Uh, but is instead, you see it almost like divide into two, almost this like weird psychedelic sort of like Venn diagram sort of thing. Um, it's very, very trippy. Um, and it's going to swim right back down towards Geld, and it's going to make two attacks at Geld. The first one's going to be a 10, which is a miss. Second one is going to be a 20. That'll hit for, uh, that's going to be eight points of piercing have to four plus four of radiant damage. So a total of eight. And that's it for him. That'll bring us to Lilia. I'm just going to try to poison spray it again. Okay. Constitution saving throw. He fails. Takes three poison. That's that for me. Alrighty. And Geld, you're up. Um, let's see here. Geld is going to go ahead and um, first use her bonus action and anyways to drink her prayer. Okay, so that's 4d4 plus 4. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, no. wait yeah, right? so you, yeah, you can take that and then add 4, so 12 health back. Okay. Yep. Um, Alright, and what she is going to do next is... Um, she is going to go ahead and jump ship to go and try to make her way over to Autumn. Um, okay, if you do that, the sh- that tab, right? Uh, yeah, and the shark will get an opportunity attack on you. Geld is willing to take that risk. Okay. I think that was the square. Yep, so the shark's gonna bite. That'll be an eight to hit, so that's a miss. Alrighty, awesome. Very and cool. that'll and then, be it for Geld. Oh, you do still have an action, so you could you could move another three oh. squares if you want. Awesome. Okay. Uh, one, two, right there. All right. There we go. She's making her way over. Okay. <laughs> Love to see it. Alrighty, that's going to bring us to Autumn and Lena. Am I go still ahead. under the effects of command? Uh, the command would have been to halt, so you're you're there, basically. I am killing this shark. Okay. Fifteen. Fifteen will hit. Six points. Four, six. Okay, he's looking very hurt. Uh, offhand attack. Uh, ten's gonna be a miss. That's fine. <laughs> gonna try this again. But I don't have feel and agility, so 15 feet away. Go ahead, hit me. All right. He's going to bite. That's a 13 to hit. Yes. 
Alrighty. Very nice. All right. And Lena. I am going to move up on Sharky Boy. And I am going to swing away. Miss. Mine's going to miss. And we're going to go for another kick. And also miss. Yeah, that's like a weird, to... like, kind of like division of it is, is very off putting to you. All right, that is all I got. Alrighty, Bobbert, you're up. Uh, Bobbert is going to leap from the front of the boat to the bench to the back end next to Lena and just swing his flail right down on the shark. Okay. May have put too many out there. Uh, we'll take that 22 there. That's 11 points right there. Very, very nice. And that's actually enough for a kill. Uh, these things are pissed. <laughs> Alrighty, anything else? Uh, that is... I think... I think it's going to do it for right now. Alrighty, Marigold's going to go, and just with a cantrip, he will uh, fire off a frostbite at this last shark. Gonna make a con save and fail, and just kind of freezes into a giant ice block and sinks down into the water. Uh, she's then gonna, like, bonus action cast a spell, and you see this giant vine grow out of the side of the boat. Reach out, grab Autumn and Geld, and pull them back onto the boat as part of her bonus action. Be like, alrighty, guys, um, let's uh, figure out what the fuck's going on. And with that, we are out of combat. And we're going to go ahead and take a quick little five, ten minute break or so. Uh, we'll take a short rest during this time and we'll be back to continue the story. So stay tuned.
welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for hanging out during our short rest. Our party has healed up and uh, tended to some wounds. We've got some beverages, went to the bathroom, all that good stuff, and we are back and ready to roll. Thank you for hanging out with us. Um, if you haven't yet, check out the new merch on the merch shop that Mr. Wee Woo put so much work into getting operational for the holiday season. Uh, really good stuff, and it helps to support us, support you. So uh, take a peek. All right, so it's a single uh, the holiday party. item. I, I know. I, listen, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm really pushing it, man. I'm do. I'm. I'm stepping it up. I know you're uh, good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, the party having rode out to sea to investigate this strange tower, uh, found themselves in the center of these strange circle of orbs that Marigold managed to arrange before passing out and then attracting a bunch of sharks that came and swam through all the orbs and got weird strange modifications or buffs and effects put on them as they swam through them uh but you guys managed to defeat all the sharks with minimal problems save for bobber's arm um and are now still kind of sitting on the ship surrounded by the circles and dead sharks and the tower right in front of you still and we'll say about an hour's passed as you guys are kind of healing up and, and tending to wounds and, and talking and figuring out what the hell's going on. So kind of, as we're resting, we're talking. Marigold kind of, uh... Um... First off, sorry, I don't know what just came over me. That was really overwhelming. Um... This makes two of, of us, that's okay. Um... Is every everyone's everyone's good, right? Um, Bobbert, we can fix that later if you want. Your arm, I can It'll regrow it. Oh my god! <laughs> It'll just take me like an hour. There's like a, a ritual, and it's it's actually kind of soothing. Um, as nice as that sounds, uh, my brother Billiam he also has uh, one less limb, and he got a really swanky pimped out arm i think i would like to go with that option but okay, i appreciate okay. you okay i just just wanted to offer um fucking so... exhibit pimp my arm <laughs> <laughs> where'd you like yo-yo stocks <laughs> oh anyway um yeah so sharks attacking what what did you guys see when i was passed out uh sharks. we relay it... the sharks and what they, I have to imagine. Yeah, we just relay everything. Okay. We saw one grow wings. Really? Weird. Um. I okay, can say so... for certain that going through these portals did not affect me. That That's... I know, well, it did, but it didn't. It, I'm not sure if it the port. I I went through and I was fine. Okay. Which one did you go through? I point to the gray one. That's one. Okay. Okay, and did any of the sharks go through that one? There was, like, the one you were fighting. That was the... Yeah, he, it, he like, brought me through. Okay, and it turns to, like, clockwork, almost? Yes, clockwork. Okay, um... It was... She kind of, like... We, that one came from... This one first, but... Very. I don't know what came over me. Hmm. Okay. Uh, does anyone have like a notepad I can draw on really quick? Uh, uh, hang on. I get these. And Bobbert pulls out a college degree and just flips it over to the back and hands it over. <laughs> <laughs> you worked hard for this. Do you want me to really draw on it? or? No, it was community college, man. It's okay. I can get it reprinted. Go ahead. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, it's, it took like three months. It's all good. Okay. Um. So she begins to draw and kind of explains as she draws. Um. So based off of some of the research I've been doing and some of the feedback that I've got from other guild members and... and kind of correlating with what we've seen here um she draws 16 circles and and kind of this strange complicated thing and it takes her a few minutes um 
the end, which is a, a very crudely drawn, um, and yet delicate and dainty, and Marigold's kind of smaller bits of. handwriting Click on that it'll make it full screen so um i'm sure you guys know but uh, our plane of existence Welcome back. Sorry, the connection <laughs> came out. <but> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. But you could silence that for one once. Anyway, yes, Discord great wheel. Nitro perk. Yeah, Discord broke for a little bit. Okay. All right, so as you're booting back up, I'll continue to talk if that's good. Be good. Okay, so... Uh, what she does is, as she draws, if you can see in the handout, each of the different planes on the outer ring has sort of a symbol associated with them, kind of in that pale gray color. She draws each symbol in each corresponding circle. And she goes, Okay, so a lot of smart people and scholars and wizards and mages and priests have, have kind of put together this model of how these planes are arranged, or how they're supposed to be, anyway. <coughs> Um, and so, I think these different color circles correlate with these different planes. And so it makes sense if the one, the gray one would be Mechanus, if it kind of came out clockwork. I mean, Mechanus is the plane of order and, and regularity and predictability. Um, and you said that the one, the brown one over there was, like, evil? Okay, so maybe that would be the Nine Hells, then. Okay. That's all adding up. Um, Any of the other ones kind of stand out as strange? Purple one. And she kind of looks over to the other side, okay, directly opposite of Mechanus, and she goes, Okay, that adds up. Limbo, the Plane of Chaos, Unpredictability, Instability. Um, Okay, okay. That green one had nice and pretty flowers. Arcadia? I've heard nice things about that one. Okay. Um. So then why is this tower showing us all these different planes? I mean, I guess it makes sense that it's extra planar. Um, kind of showed up out of nowhere. What if the tower is like a ship? What do you mean? Like, what if the tower is how they, like, move between planes? And they and... came to our plane using the tower. Ship, or is it a gate? Well, it's a pretty bad gate if it's got no doors or windows. Portal. Opening. House for transfer. Okay, so if this is a flap in the a tent. portal or a ship or something, uh, where did it come from? Which one is it? I mean, there's a lot of options. Um, I mean, we did just send some people to the Nine Hells to take care of Galdoran. Maybe, I, I don't know, maybe it's from... I'm just kind of grasping at straws here. Um, And uh, I, I heard people talking that they think Callie's inside the tower? Which one's that bitch? The dragonborn. The tall, friendly 
Strong one. They have a bounty on our head. Oh, this one, and she turns into her, and then does like a dramatic like hair flip. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot you can do that. Interesting. Um. <laughs> does anyone so know anything else? So there's no doors or windows. Mm -hmm. But she's somehow in the tower. So how did she get in the tower? Gild's gonna pipe up and be like, "Well, maybe there's a door under the water." Maybe she swam. It's possible. I could I could investigate quickly if you want to give me a few minutes. I got no right. better ideas. So Marigold's going to wild shape into a dolphin and dive into the water, and she'll take about a few minutes to swim around and investigate under the water around the tower. So while she's gone, this is a bit of a puzzle for you guys. Um... So I'd like you guys to collectively take the information you know, and we'll assume people talk and tavern chats, fair game, anything you know about previous missions, anything you know about the lore of the world. This is this is something, this is baseline. You're starting with minimal information and we're going to slowly build up. <sighs> All right. So someone said some shit about there being, a I don't know, gray fucking plane that was I don't know death and shit I, I mean like Hades sounds like death and shit yeah Haven Queen Long, long, man. Don't normally have to disconnect during this. Stupid internet. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it's all good. I'm annoyed because I missed a bunch of that. Um, okay, so we were explaining, so there's the positive and negative axes, there's also the law and chaos axes. So basically, if you think of like a typical alignment chart, you have like lawful, good, chaotic, evil. Uh, if you look at the positioning, Mount Celestia would be perfectly in between Mechanus and Elysium, so that oh, would be I'm like good. the lawful good, whereas like the Abyss, the abyss is perfectly yep. between, that'd be like chaotic okay. evil. So Hades, the one that is most suspect, is sort of the true or the uh, the neutral evil plane, we'll call it. All right, um, that's where we think that the. I don't know. It seems like a death one. Death obsessed ones. But then, like, the angel lady would be, I guess, one of these ones up here, and... How about the one where they came out with angel wings? I mean, very, very astute opinion. I won't say no. I don't know shit about any of these, though. Maybe there's multiple angel places. There was talk of an angel lady. 
Yeah, supposedly some angel lady came and took her into the tower. So, we're thinking these orbs have something to do with unlocking the tower? I mean... Can... Is there, like, any other discerning features on the tower? Aside from, like... Because you had mentioned there were, like, circles along mm -hmm. the tower and kind of, so, like, these floating orbs. So the, you, you notice that these circles on the tower are almost projecting light to make the circles in the water. Okay. So they any... right now they are in that perfect ring, oriented just so to cast the light that you're seeing in the water right now. You're free to do that. That's did fair. Any, I'm wearing a tin can. Did anyone actually happen to be looking at the tower at the same point where things were intersecting the circles? No, I was more worried about the things intersecting the circles coming back to bite yeah. my other arm. That's what I'm thinking. Like maybe, like maybe something happens to the tower when something is in the circle. I mean. We could hold on a minute, and Bobbert's gonna pull out another no, one no. of those two thick javelins. The Do circles think... did not affect me. Well, it's. Do you want to go swimming out there again? You are a very good swimmer. No, I. No, not really. No, I have no bit, bit focused on the arm I lost. I'm sorry. But you're honest. Okay. Will it? It will. That's right. Uh, could, shall we just row the boat closer, and if the big light circles don't move, we go through one and see what happens? Preferably not the black one that's all scary and whatnot. Uh, I, every, according to that explanation, it sounds like all the ones towards the tower right now a little bit scary. Oh, then... All right, and looking back at the drawing, let's go through one of the happy ones first, and then we'll loop back around ways. Sure, let's loop through one of the happy ones. So, it, the, you guys want to go through? Bobbert's logic is if the black one is the scariest one, the one directly opposite would be nicer. But that would also take longer. What'd you say, Per? I said, well, we will obviously vote for the boy one. I, I mean, that's when we know what we're getting, at least. Okay, I like this. This is fair. Alright, so as you row, and all of you pass through the green one, which represents Arcadia, nothing really seems to happen. Uh, but you get the boat closer to the tower, and it's a little harder to see at this angle. You know, having a little bit of, you know, vertical horizontal distance helps you kind of see but like at the base of the tower you can definitely see there's like multicolor lights up there but they're harder to discern in that same pattern if that makes sense i'm going so, to climb it's almost like it's almost like watch it like sitting in the front row at like the movie theater where you're like craning up to kind of look and see the screen you almost have to be back a ways to really make sense and get the best angle oh i'm climbing to the first one i find uh, you, there are no handholds or cracks. This is totally smooth. So, and with a climb speed? Mm-hmm. Aha! Breath of the Wild Shrines, got it! I got a, I got another question for Geld. Um, is it possible for her to either try and throw either Autumn up there to get, like, a height advantage look around, or, like, Bobbert, whichever one, you know, she can, like, pick up and toss in the air? I politely re <laughs> just catch me. She will try her best. Um, also, as we were passing through those lights, were we looking at the tower to see if anything was affected, or did you say mm -hmm. that nothing was affected? Nothing that you notice. Per, you had something? Yeah, I just wanted to see if I could do an arcana check. Sure. What are you trying to figure if out? There is any kind of like shimmer of magic that might be like a door that was locked or you know like that would appear or something I don't 
go ahead and make me an arcana check. We'll see if you're in tune with sort of the, the planar energies here. It's going to be kind of a high DC. Um, nothing specifically is jumping out at you. However, you're sort of stuck on some of the details of the story here. So Callie was teleported away somewhere. She said it was somewhere dark and gray. You're 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 sensing you're on the right track with focusing on that, but maybe Hades wasn't didn't fit the exact description. Maybe try recalling some of the other details about where Callie was. Set. And that's kind of. As a whole. And it, that was the night I went to the ER, so I don't remember. <laughs> Alright, so cold, dark, icy. Lots of death. Ron is it was uh, the icy one. And it's more along the full spectrum. Hmm. Unless they're in the nine hells, could, could be a level of the abyss. It's Here's interesting to be icy because that's fire on that side. I think the abyss was a good thought. There are nine of the hells and they... Uh, I deem... Power of cold and... Luke, just for clarity, did uh, did Marigold also draw the Far Realm or any she representation did. of that? Or is she, that just like... She did not, no. Okay. Yeah. So, so we are focusing on the outer plane. No Correct. positive, there's no negative, no shadow. Correct. She, she only drew the outer planes here. Upper and lowers. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, okay. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I guess like this core stuff is just kind of like known. Right. That's that's more you guys you guys have had interactions with the Feywild. You guys have had interactions with the Shadowfell. Mm -hmm. The elemental planes. I think Marigold's been to the plane of water to go search for Susan at one point. But until you guys went to the Nine Hells, that was the only extra planar um, stuff we we've, we've explored so far in tech. The outers versus like the the uh, yeah. Yeah. You guys are getting there. We 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 the deductive reasoning is strong here. I will say while this is going on, Bobber is just kind of like turning the thing left and right, trying to make <laughs> more sense of it. At this point, at this point, uh, Dolphin Marigold would pop back up and kind of jump out and turn back into her halfling self and end up on the boat. Uh, no doors or anything. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Sorry. Nothing, nothing under the water. Sorry. Um, I, I, it goes pretty far down, but. Like all the way to the surface? As far as I could tell, I mean, it would take me. A lot longer to go that deep, but. Oh, God. All right. It's a very big tower. Any luck? Anything you guys have tried? No. 
Bhagat Singh. Unclimbable. I mean, I could fly us up there if we want to get a closer look at the surface. I could that that'd be my last wild shape for the day, though. I mean, I'd have to sleep a little bit, but that's no problem. Are we on the island or on the boat, like next uh, to the tower? You guys, I assume you guys rode. We, we you rode. guys would be like here, yeah. Okay. Are there any of the spheres next to, like the boat? No, they're they're high up on the tower. Okay. Yeah. Like it's kind of like the movie screens, like way above you, and they're just projecting onto the ocean. We checked low. We might as well check. All right, I can probably carry anybody else has one anything. or two. Robert just kind of stares at the tower for a brief moment. And then in his right. striking mind asks in Celestial, is anybody home? Nothing happens. Mm. Okay, so I've been listening to that other cat lady, not you, the other cat lady talking bitch a little much. Um, talking about death and shit, yeah? So death technically isn't either good nor evil. It just is in existence. So maybe we're stuck on the fact that it really isn't evil necessarily. That death is more of like a neutral thing. And we need to be more towards the middle. Because isn't like, um, I don't know, it's like uh, Isgard or, or whatever. Isn't that like a fucking like ancient battlefield shit where warriors go to die? I think you're North right. Say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe you might be onto something here. Because um, she didn't. She said cold, dark, and icy. She didn't necessarily say like evil with bodies and shit. That could be like a battlefield. It's possible. Leaning more toward Arkaron. Alf, Alf, Iwiwu doesn't. Arkaron, Arkaron. Okay, but here's the real question: With the knowledge of where she's going, what are we doing with that? Are we? Assuming that one of these areas is a door, since none of them have an effect, wouldn't it just make sense to try your guesses and go through? I like that plan. Um, well, Autumn, you said you you went through the mechanist port, the mechanist. We'll call them portals, I suppose. And nothing really happened, right? Well, to me, the sh has has anyone tried stepping into any of the other ones, or we rode through the. A uh, pretty green one by the gray one with the flower shark. Which one's that? Uh, Ar Arcadia, and nothing happened. Yeah. So, I mean, there's two. Uh, is it possible that one of them is the key? Uh. What's right. our What's our best guess? Try them all. If not, if there's no negative repercussions, I suppose we could just go down the line and try them all. There hasn't been any negative time. Just to be cautious one at a time. Sure. Okay. Marigold will take a moment and cast Water Walk to allow everyone to walk on the surface of the water without swimming. Oh. That should make things a little simpler, I suppose. <laughs> oh, this is nice. I will brave. I will brave the unknown. What is in here? All right, uh, Bobber. So the one you're standing on uh, would correlate to. I kind of did my best to try to line them up. That would correlate to um, Carcerai. Mm -hmm. uh, Autumn standing next to Archeron. Lane is next to Asgard. Lilia is next to the Abyss. Geld is next to Hades. I step in. As you step in, Autumn, you feel this overwhelming chill of icy death rush down <sighs> your spine. 
you immediately feel very out of your comfort zone. Cold, lifeless, like any source of joy or comfort or any sense of enthusiasm is just sort of, it's like the most overwhelming, sapping depression just instantly draining you. And the rest of you watch as Autumn steps in the sphere that sort of icy blue sphere on the tower also shines brighter out out as you step out you can kind of feel the warmth start to creep back into you it's not an instantaneous effect but that 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 sense of normalcy kind of begins to creep back and you realize whoa okay that one had a major effect on I you i see cold sadness i see <laughs> I see cold sadness. Are you okay? No. Anybody else want to try one? I'll, I'll give it a go. What was the worst that can happen? And Bobber is going to step into the red of what would be archery? All right. No effect. Okay. Yeah, no, I didn't get the icy cold. That's weird you got the icy cold, though. Bro, just lay down. Soak up some sun. <laughs> Actually does. Just mm -hmm. doesn't care about the water on the ground. Just... <laughs> Go steps into the inky black one. No effect. out but yeah no it, it's good over here too there's nothing uh weird about this one surprisingly enough all right fuck it as you step into the one representing asgard no effect yeah nothing And Lena stepping into the abyss. No effect. Lillian. Lillian, sorry. So, something is different about this one that Autumn's got. Yeah, but what do we do with that? Well, that me... one actually did something. We just kind of sat in some pretty light. <laughs> Autumn. Yes. I want you to try something if you're if you're willing to. If not, I can I can do it. But you've already stepped in once, so I know you're capable. Yeah, listening. You're standing on the surface of the we're calling it portals, right? Something. Try going through. Okay. We will. I'm in, I'm going in, and I'm diving. All right, I'm going to take you off the map. Of course you are. <laughs> Guys, she just disappeared. She just disappears. What? That's crazy. Where she disappeared to? And Bobber comes like, tink, tink, tink. It has to be the way in. It's the way somewhere. Seems like... Progress, shall we? Well, I'm not leaving her Geld alone. Geld dives in. <laughs> All right, Geld, Geld's nose diving in. Autumn is Geld's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. Oh, yes, He's a ride oh, or die right. for Autumn. <laughs> well, okay. And Bobber will just also like kind of can't like hop like a flea cannonball up into it. All right, Marigold right, so dives through. I will fall asleep. Alrighty. You guys all find yourselves in a warm, cozy, well-decorated interior of what appears to be a circular room, maybe about 130, 150 feet across. Um, Strange-looking furniture and bookshelves and ornaments and decorations. Uh, but in the center of this room, standing around what appears to be almost... Um, it's like a war table 
uh, are two figures, one of which looks very familiar. Um, you see the tall, confident, um, rather friendly and fabulous dragonborn in Cali, sitting, currently just reading a book, uh, and standing, kind of like perusing over the table, uh, is a very noble, serious-looking, uh, angelic woman with fiery red hair, brilliant golden angel wings kind of folded neatly, wearing rather strange ornate armor. And both of them kind of turn up to face as the six of you emerge. Lena will look at herself up and down. Well, one of us is going to have to change. <laughs> and, uh... Jen, if you'd like to be Callie, Callie is now in here as well. So, you can roleplay two characters if you want, so I'm not the only one masturbating and talking to two people. Hey, everybody! Uh, oh my... Uh, hey. Callie, you're okay, good. Um, I, You see the, the angel woman just kind of stop, turn... And just has this icy cold glare that kind of freezes everyone in their tracks. <laughs> she touches a necklace um, that you can see Callie is also wearing a necklace. Um, and it, you can sense there's some sort of distortion magic affecting her voice. Uh, as she speaks, you hear it and understand it in common. She goes, Outsiders. From the material plane, I presume? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, these are my buddies that I was, like, telling you about earlier, and, uh, yeah, so they're they're from, like, the normal place, I guess? I see. So, you, you weren't lying. They do care about you quite deeply if they were able to infiltrate. Um, it's not all that difficult if you know what you're doing but certainly enough to keep out most of the riffraff um you say the is worried about you <laughs> i hope she got my message mm -hmm. you say these are your friends from the material plane although the redhead dresses like a gift And Marigold kind of... <laughs> Hi, yes. Um, We are from the, the Material Plane. We're from the Tealish Adventuring Company, and I'm Marigold. Um, we're just here to look for our friend and to maybe ask what this tower's all about and um, if, 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 if there's... Uh, we're, just, we're just more curious than anything. Um, and... Thank you so much for, for taking care of our friend Callie here. We, we really do appreciate it. Um, I'm sure she's very eager to get home. Right, Callie? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Home home is good. Everybody, um, everybody's okay at home, right? Everybody made it back? Yeah, we're, we're, we're all good. Um, forgive me. Um, I'm Marigold, and you've met Callie. These are our other... Uh, company members, we've got Bobbert and Autumn and Lilia, Lena, um, and Marigold kind of like sheepishly extends a hand and the angel lady kind of looks bizarrely. Do you wish to touch me? What is... Marigold, um, a handshake? It's how we say hello, where we're from? And she kind of like gestures a little closer and this angel woman kind of reaches out and does like the most awkward, like mechanical kind of handshake. Just clearly not familiar with the custom. Um, in a shared tongue, um, I'm referred to as the Winter Lily. I did not mean to intrude i apologize um ending up here on your plane of existence was sheer accident and i i can explain if if you allow me to marigold kind of um 
Yeah, I mean, the more information, the better. Um, we're we're just, you know, here to learn, and we come in peace, and you know, we're not we're not trying to start anything with extra planar people. Um, and the winter lily sort of turns towards Callie, and kind of goes. You've been amicable enough the last few weeks you've spent with me. Do you, you, you vouch for these outsiders. You trust them. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do with with my life. Excellent. Um, then I'll share the same with them as I've been sharing with you. Um, I belong to uh, a coalition. Um, a council, a group of rather prominent individuals from the Outer Plains. Uh, we collectively refer to ourselves as the Guardians of the Rift. And she kind of gestures to the, the pendant, like the little badge on her lapel. Um, this allows us to communicate freely with um, members of other planes where language barriers are sometimes a bit difficult to overcome. Uh, and despite the differences in our philosophies and our customs and our heritage, um, the Guardians seek to collectively ensure a harmonious balance between the planes. We've existed for... Well, time is sort of a funny thing when you talk about planes, but for a very long time. Um... I, although not originally from there, have been given dominion over the outer plane of Archeron. And, um, that is where I found your friend Callie here. She seemed very lost, bewildered, and clearly not native. Um, I took her in and, well, been keeping her safe despite the chaos that's been going on in the outer planes over the last several weeks um you see we regulate travel uh, amongst and between the outer planes um we try to ensure that to a minimum although it is unavoidable we, we we keep tabs on it um and we ensure that everything is is sanctioned by our group um Historically, the Inner Plains have been a place of a mutually agreed upon exclusion. Although, I do believe there was a small infraction from the Nine Hells onto your plane not too long ago, if I'm not being mistaken. Yes. Um, unsanctioned by the Guardians of the Rift, and um, our intelligence has told us that that has since been uh, become a non-issue. I take it that you are the ones responsible for um, dealing with Galdoran? Very well. Um, well, we appreciate your assistance in the matter. Um, I'm here in your plane. Let me let me be brief. I've come to the material plane by necessity. Um, I'm missing something and I plan to be here for as long as I need to I'll need to speak with some of the other guardians to ensure that we can establish a trustful relationship as a lot of this information is quite privileged and dangerous we don't want it getting out to the wrong hands especially in the inner planes but um know that there's potential grave threat coming to your world, and we're prepared to do everything we can to figure it out and stop it before it's happening. Um, as a gesture of good faith, and to know that I have the best intentions for you and your world, um, I, I have a gift, if, if you will accept. Yeah, we uh, love gifts. Alright, and that is going to give us to tonight's uh, magic item for the evening. So, to, to kind of pause and wrap up the mission tonight. Um, you guys all successfully completed this mission. You're all going to get 550 experience. You're all going to get one tea leaf point. 
and we've got a bunch of magic items that have rolled over. Uh, so the Winter Willie's gift is actually a blade from her plane. Uh, this is the Archeron blade. It is a long sword and it does require attunement. It's a plus one. Um, you're immune to effects that turn undead. Uh, you can use your action once per day to give you so yourself 1d4 plus 4 temporary hit points. And you have the uh, Disheartening Strike ability. Uh, when you hit a cr uh, creature with an attack using the Archeron Blade, it has disadvantage against the next saving throw it makes before the end of your next turn. Uh, they are immune to the effect if they are immune to the Frightened Condition. So... If you're interested in bidding on the Archeron Blade, command slash W space GM, and then the number of tea leaf points you'd like to bid. So we'll go ahead and open the bids now. Going once. Going twice. Viewer's choice is open now because I don't have my phone on me and I probably got a message and I didn't answer it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Well, we'll keep that rocking and rolling. Um... But, uh, going thrice, sorry, this one's kind of, this one, this one's been a little out of order, but, uh, we'll get there. Uh, the Archeron Blade's gonna go to Bobber. So go ahead and copy, uh, that one actually might be on d, d Beyond, that is, uh, I think it's a wild mount item. I'll, uh, I'll hunt that one down. Cool. Uh, there's also three rollovers, but we'll handle those now. We've got the Tentacle Rod, we've got the Eyes of the Eagle, and we've got the Ring of Feather Falling. Take a quick moment to read through the all eyes. of those. You want to start with the eyes? Yeah, start with the eyes. All right, so let me type real quick just so we have it in the chat. Log. Minus one T-Leaf point. Bobbert. Archer on Blade. All right. Um, eyes of the Eagle requires attunement, advantage on perception checks that rely on sight, and you can make out really small details of extremely distant creatures. Um, so if you are interested in the Eyes of the Eagle, go ahead and get those bids in now. Going once. Going twice. Going thrice. Alright, sold for one tea leaf point. To Autumn. Alrighty, that's all yours. Uh, we'll do the Ring of Feather Falling next. So... Clearing everything out, starting the bid over. If you are interested in the Ring of Feather Falling, go ahead and get your bids in now. Going once. Going twice. Going thrice. Alrighty, we've got a winner for two tea leaf points for Geld, the Ring of Feather Falling. Nice. Hell yeah, so you can go ahead and copy and paste that onto your character sheet. Very nice. Oh god, the dog's gonna jump off of building. <laughs> Alrighty, I and... Pop up to come back. I'm sorry, I kind of accidentally oh, clicked it out. You're totally okay. Um, it's actually gonna be in the, um, the magic item dump if you ever need to find it again. But there you go, right there. Awesome, thank you so much. Yep. And then the last one is going to be the Tentacle Rod. So clearing screens, everything, starting the bids over. If you're interested in the Tentacle Rod, go ahead and starting bids now. Going once. Going twice. Alrighty, and that's going to be one more rollover week, so we will let that continue. So... As all that's happening, and as uh, viewer's choice is counting down, uh, the Winter Lily would explain um, that she's willing to schedule a meeting between the Guardians of the Rift and whatever representatives from your organization. Um, so long as the so long as the Guild can demonstrate trust. Um, so in future missions, we will have to work on building and maintaining these relationships with the Winter Willie to establish that first meeting. 
Until then, she's going to be very withholding with information about the specific nature of this threat, and she's going to stay here as long as she needs to. So this is sort of an introductory setup to learn how to get into these towers, learn what the towers are, learn about the Guardians of the Rift, and also uh, hint about this impending threat. So kind of an interesting, a little unorthodox kind of end to a mission where we're more, more questions than answers, but uh, looking forward to exploring this in the future with more members. And this is going to be kind of a, a guild-wide collective thing. So I definitely encourage you guys to be sharing information, using tavern chat, theorizing, coming up with whatever you guys need to. Uh, this is going to be a collective guild effort. So I want to kind of encourage that that community building upon ground and slowly, you know, everyone mission by mission compiling and building up to, to the, the greater good here. That's mm. kind of the, the vibe I'm going for with this one. So as we get the last votes for viewer's choice coming in 30 seconds or so. Viewer's choice goes to... Alrighty. Lydia, you go ahead and take your bonus tea leaf point. Congratulations. Uh, and DM's choice tonight, um, I'm going to give to Lena for kind of the uh, being able to tie in um, a lot of the tavern chat sort of stuff and, and keep that um, information stream going. Um, I know it can sometimes be a little awkward and like, does this character know this? I know the player has information that the characters might not. Um, again, with the West Marches format, it, it gets a little funky. So I kind of want to shake it up a little bit and make, you know, we're going to kind of assume when it comes to the Guardians of the Rift and everything that information shared and disseminated and, and, and people talk. And so um, definitely thank you for kind of taking the lead on that and, uh, you know, working with me through a little bit of the, the kinks as we work this out, but uh, definitely well-deserved. Um, DM's choice there. So, uh, congrats, guys. We're going to start this new arc. We've got the one rollover thing. Uh, next week, we do have the Sano backstory mission, so look forward to that. And uh, we'll pick up with normal missions after that. Uh, that's pretty much what I've got for the evening. I don't know if we want to raid out to anybody. I got yeah. some RuneScape people. About it. Anybody Morning. got anybody? That's okay. Um, we don't have to make. We don't have to run out every night. Are... That's true. Hey, oh. Alrighty. Alrighty. Let's call it there. Have a good night. Have a good weekend, guys. And we'll see you next Thursday. Uh, bye. Toodles. Bye. Bye.